you know, to hear all this stuff. So welcome everybody to Mimansa's Clean Living Seminar Series. Um, today I'm so excited to be here and to share with you this great new topic about greening your home. And, you know, you think about your home and all that we have invested in our homes and uh, the memories and all the joyful things that we have in our lives, but we don't realize that, um, uh, we don't think about greening it. We don't think about what does it mean to live in a more green, uh, green home? So that's what we're gonna dive into today. I wanna introduce you to our agenda. We're gonna talk about why toxins are a problem, um, toxins that are in your home, you know, where kids, uh, kids are storing toxins like you know are they in their bodies are they in their toys and clothes and also we'll get into how you can also green your own home and learn more for yourself and I'm so excited because this topic has been put together by one of my really good friends here that's joining us today who is Dr. Nicole Yesman and I want to really share with you the gifts that Dr. Yesman is bringing to the world because she's really um, a, a true expert and knowledgeable in where toxins are, not just from um, reading about it or learning about it, which she certainly has done, but in addition to that, from her own experience in living a life that had to be uh, non-toxic. So Dr. Yasmin, I know there's so much to say about you, but is there anything that you'd like to share also with uh, people about yourself? Um, I am a naturopathic doctor and Chinese medicine practitioner, acupuncturist, and I have been studying um, environmental toxins and toxins in the body for several years now and um, have really devoted part of my life, a big part of my life to becoming toxin free. Mm. Thank you. Is, yeah. Thank you. And you're able to share all that amazing knowledge with everybody. Um, through your practice as well as through this uh, what amazing program that you've put together, which is how to green your home. So um, Dr. Yesman, you always talk about um, naturopathic medicine in such a beautiful way with trees. So I'd love if you could share that with people in your example. Um, sure, sure. Um, for instance, what, uh, here a picture of a few trees. What do you see as being the difference between these? Does anything stand out to you? Mm. Wow. Um, they are all trees, but well, the first one has someone standing in front of it. Is that, <laughs> is that real? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's Photoshop, but um, so right, right. So you have a person mm -hmm. standing in one of them and um, some other obvious things are, you know, the, the tree number three is, is bearing this big red beautiful fruit yes um, and so uh, the tree in the middle you can see it's um, kind of almost glowing in a way and that is showing us that the tree number two I'm talking about uh, the the chi is really strong in that in that mm, tree um, the chi is strong in that tree I love it and then <laughs> yeah and then tree number three you know it's it's bearing this beautiful red fruit but you can see that the soil that it's growing in is it's more of a dry, it's not in this you know, lush, moist soil. Mm. So you have to, you know, consider that too, is how is it really drying, you know, in this kind of dry, uh, so it's an interesting um, position for that tree to be in. And so as a, as a naturopath, you're really looking at the details of each of the trees, mm. just like you would in the person, mm -hmm. that you're looking in the, at the details of the person and seeing each one as unique in their health picture, but also in their environment and where they're coming from. I love it, I love it. It's such a beautiful way to think about the body and about medicine, and how each of us has our own expression. So Dr. Yesman, um, you have a beautiful story of what got you into toxins. And um, I'd love if you'd be willing to share your personal story, because it was really touching for me to hear um, with you know all of our viewers sure I sure would um, so my my family basically um, my mom has uh, a few different autoimmune illnesses 
and as those my my brother has an autoimmune illness and my um my grandparents you can see there's a picture of my grandparents there and my grandma in that picture who i actually never got to meet she died before i was born mm -hmm. of um leukemia and so there is a big health component there. So I have, you know, my grandmother and then my mom who has, you know, these autoimmune mm -hmm. and I'm, I started thinking, I don't want to go down that road mm -hmm. and what can I do to prevent this? Mm -hmm. So I started really studying, you know, what the cause of illness was and, or could be, and there are so many, but one definitely is environmental toxins. Mm -hmm. And um, so in that case, I started saying, what can I do to prevent this and keep myself healthy? Mm -hmm. And then I had um, my son mm -hmm. uh, and said, how do I keep him healthy? Mm -hmm. And that got me into a whole nother world of toxins was in the kids stuff. Yes. So that was a whole nother opening of what can I do to you know, keep him safe. Yes, your beautiful little son here. Yes. Casey. Oh, he's so sweet. And just these little precious angels that we have in our lives. And we want to keep them protected, keep them free from harm, and, you know, have them live in their little bubbles as much as they can, because the world out there is is horrifying right now. Um, and children are, their bodies are a lot smaller, and so yes. they are more susceptible to toxins than we are as adults. Absolutely. And then especially when they're, they're young and they're forming their, you know, their systems, their immune mm -hmm. system, their central nervous system, as they're growing, they really need to be toxin-free yes. to develop those things fully. And that's the opposite of what we think about because sometimes, you know, people think, oh, your kid, you're a kid, you're resilient. The kids can eat whatever they want. They can have the candy. Us adults have to worry about it, not the children. But it's the opposite in many ways because these little precious bodies that are concentrating everything that comes into them and they just don't necessarily have the filters or, or the capabilities that, um, that, that they, you know, they would otherwise. And so their, their bodies are concentrating toxins. Right. Just and like a little animal would. Right. And they're also more children today are more exposed mm -hmm. to toxins than Good we point. were when we were growing up. Absolutely. Way more. There are way more toxins Absolutely. on many levels. Yes. So tell us about that, Nicole. You have this talk about how toxins are everywhere. They're in our home, in our air. Yep. They sure are. They are. Uh, they can be everywhere. So the mm -hmm. statistic is that um, the air in our house is can be anywhere from two to five times more wow. polluted than the outside air. And you know this is true mm. because if you bring something into your home and you're having, you know, a reaction to it, if you step outside, you know, I mean, barring the, you know, some forest fires or something happening, you yes. know, regular air outside, you know, you're going to start to feel better and that allergic reaction will come down some. So. Mm. Exactly. And, you know, things like you talk about the attics in our homes, right, the dust and the formaldehyde and asbestos and um, how it just basically sits there, and even in homes that are newer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, the and well, the newer homes pose a different type of issue. But mm -hmm. yeah, so with the older homes, you have mold and, and yeah, like you were saying, the things that they used to use in building, but the, the newer homes have... Um, yeah, different components that you're looking out for. And it's all about the dust mm. because these things, basically they off gas, they kind of come up in the air and then they are settling in the dust. Mm -hmm. So the dust is a huge component of, I mean, along with the items in your home yes. that are, you know, having these things on them. Absolutely. And so being able to clear the air in your home, it becomes so critical. And you talk about chemicals. So, you know, this is a kind of an astounding figure, 80 thousand chemicals have been introduced into the environment in the last few years like right and new substances right and yeah. most of these haven't been studied yeah. and that's the scary part yeah. is that we don't really know you know what what these things are doing to us we we know some but definitely not not all the majority of that has not been studied absolutely and you know the way the genes work you have these chemicals that are in these environments now affecting your genetics um, and we don't know what those effects are they, uh, through the methylation pathway 
um, epigenetic changes that are happening over generations. So there's so much that we have yet have to discover about how these chemicals are affecting the human body. But at least you can hypothesize that if you've introduced 80,000 new things to your DNA and microbiome in the last 50 years, it's going to start to have some effect. Definitely. You have to at least, you know, consider those mm. things. Um, yeah. And then toxins, you know, where are they? How is your body seeing them? Right. So the toxins, you know, they're, they're in our environment and in, in our homes. Um, and they can be really dangerous. Uh, the, you know, the obvious, the obvious things are when you have you know, physical reactions to something, but, um, uh, what's even more dangerous is the toxins that we don't see because when you when you have a reaction to some kind of toxin that you bring in say say you you paint a wall and you're reacting to it so you're going to take care of that right away but the toxins that you that you don't react to that are affecting your endocrine system you know your hormones or your central nervous system those are actually the more dangerous uh, toxins because they will be operating in this kind of stealth maneuver on your body for possibly years mm. doing damage and then causing um, long-term effects wow so you're saying they kind of accumulate and stick around in your system and have very slow effects for many many years they can wow. they can mm -hmm. wow. and one just for example i mean out of all the the hormone systems in your body the thyroid often takes a big hit mm -hmm. so if you are having you know, thyroid issues it, it you know the thyroid is one of the first glands to be affected by toxins Everything. in the home or yes. the environment or it's always so i mean it's just things. one of the go-to that your body says well we can kind of mm -hmm. you know tank on this one mm -hmm. so exactly the thyroid is so sensitive it's such a yes. sensitive organ and then and it actually then modulates so many other systems and it has such a strong effect on your feelings and your emotions so uh definitely something you want to protect um and if toxins are in are getting in as you're saying and affecting the thyroid that would not be a good thing um so and there are so many things that we can do but uh but detoxification is super important definitely yeah mm -hmm. and yeah and it's amazing. Tell us about this concept of a toxic cup. Um, just so this is just talking about that. Uh, you know, we all have toxins. You know, it's mm -hmm. 2018, and um, there's pollution outside from the freeway. I mean, mm -hmm. you really can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you go out to eat in a restaurant, and there's going to be you know pesticides maybe on the the vegetables that are in your meal, or you know whatever. So. We, we, we're all being exposed basically to, to toxins in our environment. And the picture of the cup is the, um, how full is your symptom cup basically yes. is the idea. So, you know, what you're eating and what's in your home and, you know, all of that kind of contributes to, you know, your, your symptom cup. And when it, it fills up, you can see in the picture this, you know, this cup is maybe halfway full. Well, when it gets higher, if it gets high enough, then the cup will spill over, and that is when you start to see symptoms. So it's all about kind of keeping your, not so much avoiding toxins completely, because it's impossible to do in this day and age, but instead it's about, you know, keeping your, symptom, your symptoms down by lowering the level of toxins or detoxing your, your body um, to get rid Regularly. of Regularly. Yes. Regularly. Super important. It's like going and getting an oil change, you know, um, especially if you're sensitive uh, and you might have some of the genetic predispositions to be more sensitive to toxins, right? Like with, in the glutathione and, and the liver and those kinds of systems. So if you are sensitive, then it is a lot like filling up and potentially spilling over. Um, and it's not until you spill over that it gets to a point of the disease potentially or a diagnosis, but the whole time we're constantly filling up, right, with toxins. And so detoxing becomes a normal routine, a part of something that you really need to do. And there are a lot of ways to do that too. Mm -hmm. There's not just one. So exactly. there are many, many options. Exactly. Okay. So tell us about this home environment. This is so fascinating when I heard this because you know this to me looked initially like 
you know, kind of a natural looking home, somebody who cares about um, good natural fibers and things like that, um, without really thinking deeply into what brands these were and things like that. But tell us, when you look at this picture, what are you thinking about this home and, and toxins and things like that? Um, so, yeah, so this, it does look like, uh, you know, there's a lot of wood being used. Um, so I would want to know, was the wood treated by anything? That would be something I would be interested in. Um, and uh, yeah, so just like the, the carpet there, you know, it, it might be made of wool. It looks like it could be wool, which would be a great thing for it to be. Mm -hmm. Is there a carpet pad underneath that's made of a foam? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the thing is, is that it used to be when we would look in people's homes and everyone's aware, you know, you're looking for asbestos or lead or, um, you know, uh, uh, things like that, radon or stuff, you know, the, the typical, but now it's 2018, there's a lot more that we look at. Mm -hmm. So, so looking at this, you know, I would want to know that, like, that couch, is it, um, you know, it, what's it, what's it made of? And what year was it made in? You know, are there flame retardants? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot to look at just in this home. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Definitely. Yeah. So unlocking what's behind your home in terms of its toxins. Such an interesting concept. Um, tell us about flame retardants. See, this really worries me. We're both moms and we both have little kids. And being physicians, we are looking at this and thinking, wow, we don't want our little kids' clothes to have flame retardants on them. Definitely. <laughs> and also knowing those health, you know, interactions between flame retardants and, you know, so many things going wrong with our body systems. Um, it's scary. So tell, yeah, what do you think? Well, you know, flame retardants are a really big issue. And I think that they get overlooked a mm -hmm. lot that, oh, you know, it's just flame retardants kind of thing. Um, but they can be especially damaging, like I said earlier, to little kids uh, because their bodies are um, really developing their immune system at, at, at a young age. And um, so they're often added to a lot of kid gear, mm -hmm. car seats, you know, high chairs, um, cribs and pajamas. So the the reason that you have those companies that make the snug fitting pajamas are to avoid, you know, using flame retardants mm -hmm. on them. So luckily enough, there, uh, and I, here's Jerry Brown is the senator, and he made this law back in, you know, way back in 1975, mm -hmm. when he was in administration, you know, they passed a law about having flame retardants on um, a, a lot of products, including furniture and and um, they recently re reversed that. So in the last few years, mm. uh, he's actually, his administration has actually reversed that to make things um, hopefully safer. But mm. here's the thing is that there's um, something called TB117. TB117. Yes. That? Uh, that, so that was the law that said, you know, things had to have flame retardants in them oh. and so now there's this tb 117-2013 uh -huh. and what that means is that they don't things don't have to have you know furniture and um etc doesn't have to have the flame retardants in them yeah but it doesn't mean that they don't so you could buy okay. a couch that had that tag on it mm -hmm. and it's a choice by the manufacturer mm -hmm. so it's not by law anymore that they have to put flame retardants on things because what they found is that the actually the toxic effects from the flame retardants mm -hmm. were actually more detrimental than they were helping. Oh, gosh. So um, they they changed that and uh, so yep and the um, yeah. yeah and detrimental to all kinds of systems right um, oh right all yes systems in your body the endocrine especially yeah, the immune system the central nervous mm -hmm. system um, all these things are affected. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, scary. So you really want to be conscious when you're picking what your kids are around, particularly for what we were saying with the little bodies and, and how much they can carry in their toxic load. So this is an astound, astonishing concept that 101 American couches were tested, right? Between 1980s to 2010. And what did they find? 
Yes. So, um, you know, 85% of them had harmful flame retardants in them. 85. Yeah. And this was, you know, so wow. the uh, Greek Science Policy Institute and Arlene Bloom, she's been a huge factor in, um, she's a, Arlene Bloom is, if you don't know, she's a chemist in Berkeley mm -hmm. that, um, you know, founded and directs the, you know, Green Science Policy Institute. Mm -hmm. And she's been a huge proponent in um, changing the flame retardant laws and, and bringing awareness to the subject. Um, but I myself, a few years ago when uh, my son was, was born, I, you know, got him a car seat mm -hmm. and the high chair and all, all the stuff that comes along with it. And then I had it third party tested. Um, the car seat in particular had said that, you know, there was no, uh, no flame retardants in it. And I had it third party tested. Wow. And in fact, there, there, um, there, there were, in fact, it was Firemaster 550. Oh gosh, <laughs> which is one of the bad ones, Inside one of the really your bad ones. Child, and seat. so he had been, yeah, riding around um, mm -hmm. in the, for the first couple of months, and so of course I, um, I, and then also I had a uh, his high chair was tested, yeah. and I they swore up and down the company through mm -hmm. emails and that there was no there were no flame retardants oh, in gosh. the high chair, and then I had it third party tested, and there were. So it's a real touch and go. There, there isn't a lot of um, validity to these companies saying, you know, yes or no. We, there are no. You know, they, they word it so that they can get around it. Absolutely. And um, absolutely. But so I, we have to be really conscious and, you know, know our sources, know what we're buying. Exactly. Um, know the company. Know their ethics. Right? And and even yeah, and even then. Um, what actually had happened in the one instance is that the company had changed hands mm -hmm. and where they were sourcing their foam from, mm -hmm. they weren't adding the flame retardants to it, but oh, the, the company they were sourcing their foam oh. from was. So the company didn't actually know that they were. Um, so, so there are, and I'm so sure there are plenty of translation somewhere yes. around the chain. Yes, it's not yeah, as if yeah. anyone is, you know, you know, willingly lying. Yeah. They just don't. It's really hard when you manufacture something to catch every single aspect of the process. And this has been so relevant for you because Casey, though Casey is sensitive, right? And you had a lot of sensitivities too as a child. And it's, you know, when you're living this and you're as a mom trying to do everything you can to make sure your kids are as balanced as possible so that they don't need a lot of extra drugs and they're living as natural as possible you are going to try to find out whether or not the thing that you're buying that thing you're purchasing that's advertising to be flame retardant free is truly that and you right. have you know you're so you, you're discovering and you're inspired and it's so fascinating that you learned that it you know wasn't actually true and it wasn't their fault it was the chain that, that right. came through. Right. Unfortunately. And so what I've also learned to do is that when I buy a new product, I get it third party tested yes. first before yes. I start using it. Yes. <laughs> and then if it passes, which, you know, a lot of things do, mm -hmm. then I say, okay, we can use this now. Yeah. <laughs> it's and it's safe. so challenging, you know, that's a, a fear, you know, you're there. thank you for doing that because now you can help all of us understand how to do that. Um, so what about plastics? You know, I always used to um, not really think about this as much until I really learned about what plastics, uh, the effect of these toxins have on our endocrine system and that there is a lot of data out there that's supporting the link between that and all kinds of things like cancers and obviously thyroid conditions and reproductive issues. So, you know, you think about all this and our little babies and our little little children that are developing and how they're exposed to plastic, right? Can you talk about that? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, there's so much to say about plastics. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they there's um, the little rubber ducky in the hot bath water oh, with gosh. your little, your we little one. I had that, I had that. Right, <laughs> and so, um, but the the so yeah. we've discovered that that's not really the greatest thing for them, especially in the hot water where it's making you know the product leach more. Or mm -hmm. um, so and then so then they replace BPA with BPS, which was shown to be just as damaging, mm -hmm. if not worse. And so you know the bottom line I think is that plastics are not 
great. And they, they were great when they were introduced, um, you know, way back when, because they made so many things possible. But now we've really seen, you know, the way that they've, they've kind of, they have, you know, PVC or they have phthalates or whatever. They're always going to contain something um, because they are a petroleum oil product mm -hmm. that is not healthy. It's just not healthy. It should healthy. not be in our lives as much as it is, and it exactly. shouldn't be heated. Um, right, so definitely. Those two and, things together. and also, I mean, I'm not, you know, saying that I'm some renegade, and there can be absolutely none, but we certainly need to be way more aware of limiting the amount of plastics that are in our homes and around our little ones. Mm -hmm. And, and there's also, I just want to say that there's this kind of movement uh, to recycle plastics and reuse them in our products. And although I think that the recycling concept is great, so it's not floating around our oceans, I think the best thing would be is if we stopped making them and yes. producing them and, and kind of weeding them out that way. Because, and stop using them. Yeah. It starts with us, you know. Right. I had a major transition um, only just a couple of years ago where I always had a, you know, some Tupperware that, <laughs> that I kept that those, those two sets that you just, you can't get rid of because they were perfect and they were, there's nothing wrong with them and it felt wasteful to throw things away. But um, what I realized is that the harm that it was doing by using it and having it around and even going for it and this concept of heating it with a microwave and all that stuff, it just, it wasn't worth it. And it was so much easier to have less and, and to give away the things that you don't need um, to others that maybe don't have any. And then hopefully eventually it does, you know, become obsolete and you're no longer using it. But you can make that transition and it really is a mindset shift and saying that you're going to maybe have less and be, and be happy with less. Good point. Good point. We're very excessive. <laughs> um, and then you think about, you know, uh, our beds, right? And like what this whole idea of off-gassing. So what are your thoughts on that? Oh, um, well, off-gassing, you know, the VOCs, they, uh, it, it's like it says here, up to 10 times higher inside than outside. I would bet it's even more because, yeah. you know, you have these closed windows and doors. Yes. But off-gassing is a real issue. Um, you mentioned beds, which um, often have a lot of toxins in them mm -hmm. and since you spend a lot of hours sleeping every night mm -hmm. on them you know breathing that in in this deep sleep with these you know, deep breaths it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's a real issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah and it becomes so important especially when you're suffering from an autoimmune condition or you ha are a sensitive person and you're not sure how to quite identify what you need to change to make these symptoms go down a little bit um, you can look towards your home and ask these questions, you know, what is around me that is making me feel worse and how, what do I need to change in order to start to feel better? Once you bring that awareness into the things that you're doing at home, it becomes more easy to start to make these shifts, you know, so it's a beautiful concept. And our little babies, you know, you talked about the car seat earlier and, and making sure that those car seats are safe. Um, you have some st other stories, right? About high chairs. Right. Just that I, yeah, I, I, like I said, I had the home third party tested and mm -hmm. came back positive. And so, you know, there are brands of car seats and high chairs and all these gear that, you know, don't have flame retardants in them. Mm -hmm. You just have to kind of find them and know that the company hasn't changed hands or they haven't changed their practices or, mm -hmm. or if they have then go the distance and, do the third party testing to see what's in it, you know, through a lab that will check the chemical content and sort out. Um, and also toys I mentioned here. Yes. And, um, you know, the, the thing with toys, especially with the littles, the real littles is that they, you know, they, everything goes in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And so during that really young age, it's very important that the toys are not, you know, they're not sucking on these plastic toys all the time. Ooh. Just super yeah. common, mm -hmm. super common. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and it's not like it can never happen, you know, because things happen. You have a birthday party for your one-year-old and people give you, you know, toys that are plastic that they flip over because, you know, the plastics, they're big, they're shiny, they're, you know, they do have all these gadgets and they can do all these things that the wooden toys really can't. Yes. So, um, I mean, my, my best solution that has been personal for, for, 
me and my family mm -hmm. has been that um, if if we get something like that, especially when he was smaller, but that we would keep it for mm -hmm. you know a week or two and then pass it on to mm -hmm. like you said people that you know don't have as much or just kind of put it on the side and, and not bring it out very often. You know, put it in storage, bring it out for a day or two, a month, and you know then it's fun and he can still have it. But ultimately, it's not in his daily life where he was chewing on it all right, the time right. or exposed to the chemicals that would be in it. The plastics are, the plastic toys are really the one of the um, one of the biggest problems that kids have mm. with their gear and the flame retardants, and then the plastics that they play with mm -hmm. and touch and suck on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got a sensitive little one, maybe look there and see what you can start to shift. And there's such amazing resources like the Environmental Working Group that's put together all kinds of resources of where uh, where to source uh, certain brands. Is that right? And yeah. specific products if you wanted to share a little bit about them. Yeah, the EWG is great. Mm -hmm. They um, they are extremely accessible. You um, you can look up you know cosmetics or you know, your shampoo or your laundry detergent or your dish soap or whatever it is. It's extremely easy to type into the computer, you know, EWG, Environmental Working Group, and um, Dawn Dish Soap, or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be, 7th mm -hmm. Generation Laundry Detergent, and then they will give you a rating mm -hmm. on that product, um, you know, either A through F, or, you know, 0 through 10, and telling you if it's toxic and why. They'll tell you the different components in it and why it's, um, why it's harmful for two you know to you if it's a carcinogen if it's an endocrine disruptor if whatever it is whatever system it affects mm -hmm. um yeah so this Thank is a great that resource, resource. Yes. that everyone can use yes it used to be i just had these two little books that i would have to look everything up in yeah. and then of course ewg came out with their great huge database yes and then obviously our fashion you know we think about um our toxins in our home is certainly important, but what is on our skin is so important as well. You know, we talked about beauty products, but um, but also our clothing. And it's so hard to get clothing that's going to be natural, that's going to be breathable, um, that's non-toxic, because most of our clothing is full of polyesters that have um, Teflons essentially in them. Correct. Right, and we need to remember really that the polyester it is a petroleum oil product. Mm -hmm. So you're basically wearing wearing plastic. You're you're you, you know basically like, kind of draping plastic yeah. over your body. And we and, heat up, right? Yes. We go to the gym or we walk around and we're heating up, and so we're getting to the same issue that we just talked about. Right, and a big system that that affects is our hormones. So um, we want to really make sure. And so the clothing, it's, it's a lot like food. You need to read the labels on the clothes, read the tags. It tells you exactly what's in there, you know, 100% cotton or 50% cotton, 50% polyester. You read the label and then you know what you're wearing, just like you would know what you were eating. So it's pretty simple to, you know, read the label and not buy more. What's the hard part is, is, um, going into your closet and saying well i'm gonna you know i'm gonna wear only natural fibers exactly. now so yeah. um and and also finding finding clothes that look good because yeah. yeah so also hard and so we're always sourcing at mamansa more ideas for fashion or, um to you know provide resources for our, our viewers around what should we be wearing what kinds of um, undergarments, you know, are, should we be wearing? What kinds of night gown should we be wearing? Um, because, you know, when you sleep, that's actually one of the biggest times that you are needing your skin to breathe and to detoxify, right? So what you're sleeping in is so critical. And, and that's why we talk about the mattresses and everything else uh, to really support this um, from a health, from a health standpoint. Um, we're so lucky that Dr. Yasmin has put together this amazing program where she can come to you all um, sometimes physically but if physically is not possible then virtually right into your home and be able to provide a detailed analysis of uh, any questions that you might have but also um, what she witnesses uh, from the things that you have in your home and be able to produce this amazing report that's going to give you all of the areas that you need to you have identified that you might have uncovered something that you can start to work on 
And then we're providing a consultation service with a coach to really help you source products and be able to start implementing the right changes into your life when you try to detoxify or clean your home. So really, it's a pleasure to have this kind of work um, uh, in association partnership with Vermonta to be able to provide these detailed reports to people. So uh, if Nicole, if you wanted to share a little bit more mm -hmm. about what kinds of things the reports would include. Sure, sure. So basically come into your home and look floor to ceiling at about every aspect in every room. Um, even going to the garage and looking at the car that you drive and the, you know, the, the, the upholstery and uh, just analyzing every aspect of it, your, your children's rooms with their toys, um, we're looking for flame retardants, we're looking for, you know, the plastics and what type of plastics, you know, mm -hmm. is it a number three, is it a number one? Um, so uh, I think it's important to know that, you know, when we do this, we, um, it's, it's a process, it's a long process. So yes. it's not something that, you know, I'm gonna come in and say, here's your list and these are the changes you need to make. Yeah. It's, it's more of a, so over the next five years, this is what you can work your home into by being more aware when you're buying this product or these types of products or, you know, when you, when that, you know, rug or couch is, you know, needs replacing, let's make an informed, educated decision about what, where the next one's going to come from. Yes. So it's more just a learning experience in that way. Um, and then also the easier things that it is to, to change, you know, the, the cleaners or, but we basically look at every aspect of the home um, and analyze it for how much it is affecting, yeah, the environmental toxicity or the yeah. environmental greenness of yes, the home. Of your home. Yes. And, you know, when you're really suffering from a chronic condition, um, these kinds of investments are investments of your health, investments of your wellness of your well-being and that you've made and, and sometimes we've not made very smart decisions and not necessarily being our own fault just sort of falling for uh the status quo you know essentially going with going with the grain um purchasing you know a, a wonderful new mattress sometimes is really hard to think about with replacing it um and so these are big investments but uh, we start to think about small shifts first and then taking that into something that will bring consciousness and so you'll be able to make a bigger shift, like you said, when, when those decisions do come up and you'll know exactly which direction to go and where to source certain things from. So right. it's really and, educational. Right, and we work with you from beginning to end. So we're not just giving you this list and saying, hey, good luck. You know, we're, we're there to, you know, talk you through each aspect of it and help you prioritize or, you know, get through, how do you get through making these changes and make the impact that you want to make in your home? Okay, thank you. And it's so wonderful that you're offering this to everyone. Um, so thank you, Nicole, Yasmin, Dr. Yasmin, for coming out and for sharing all your amazing ideas and your program with everyone. Um, and I uh, just to remind everyone about Mamansa. Mamansa, we offer personalized nutrition and lifestyle services to help you live more consciously. And the work that Dr. Yasmin is doing is really aligned with helping people live more consciously in their own homes so they can bring health to themselves and to their families. So thank you for, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.